Hello everyone, welcome back again. This is video number four in the series TK 2024. My name is Piyush and we have covered uh, some basic fundamentals of containers so far. We have seen containers, how to containerize an application, why do we need it, what are multi-stage builds and so on. So we, we covered in all of these in three videos. And now in this particular videos, I'm gonna keep it short this time. So in this video, we'll be looking at the fundamentals of Kubernetes, like why do we even need it, right? And what all things it takes care of, how it is better than running just the Docker containers and what were the challenges with the Docker containers. So we'll, we'll discuss all of this and I hope you have watched the previous videos. If not, please have a look at those. Uh, we have covered the fundamentals of containers basically. Um, the comment and like target for this video are 150 likes and 150 comments in next 24 hours. So please uh, have a look at that. Please take care of uh, those targets. If you take care of those targets, I'll take care of the next video publishing as soon as possible or the next day. Right. So let's do that. Uh, let's start with the video and then we'll discuss more on this. All right, so let's say you have a small application. It has a couple of containers, maybe three, four, five containers, and it is hosted on a virtual machine at the moment. Right? Everything is working fine. Everything is healthy. Your users are healthy. Your dev team, operations team, everyone is happy. Now, let's say one of the container goes down. So that will impact the user, right? Like this could be a front end. This could be a database. This could be a back end. In any case, it will impact your real time user. So to fix the issue, you have assigned a team. Let's say it has a couple of uh, operations or a sysadmins who just, you know, logged into the system, log into the virtual machine, SSH into that, and then uh, look at the container logs and try to fix the issue as soon as possible so that your users are happy again. This is fine. Like in case this is a small application, that's not an issue, right? you can do that. You can have just a one person or two person assigned to the application and they will take care of it. But what if it happens in off hours? Um, like that person, if one or two person you have assigned for this, that person cannot work for 24 seven, right? So you have to assign a dedicated support throughout 24 seven. And um, if it is a application that is accessed by users globally you have to take care of all the time zones how would you manage that so it will come with a lot of expenses right you have to keep your team in all the time zones that means you have to hire more people and it is not even advisable to do that for a small application now let's assume you don't have a small application you have a big enterprise grade application with hundreds or even thousands of containers running on a virtual machine in that case, you have assigned a big team to it. That's fine. But let's say if multiple container crashes at the same time, let's say eight or 10 container goes down. So how would you manage that? Like it will be a hassle for, you know, a couple of person to look into everything at the same time. And when it is a production outage, that means your users are impacted. You don't have a lot of time to debug and fix the issue. And it could happen like, in every five minutes, 10 minutes, or it could happen throughout the day. So how would you take care of these things? How would you make sure your application is up and healthy all the time or with minimum intervention? Let's say your virtual machine on which application goes down. What will happen? Your entire application will go down. Now, what should we do in that case? Let's say you have to deploy a particular version. Currently, this container is running version of 0.9. You have a big release. You have to deploy a newer version, application version 1.0. How would you do that? And what if this has to happen for hundreds of containers? Like, would you do it manually or would you create some automation around it? But it is again a hassle to do that. Now, how would you expose your applications to the real time users? If they all are just serving some API endpoints, then it is advisable to use something like an API gateway, right? And it will take care of the routing. But what if these are just the different components of a web application? How would you make sure that uh, all the user facing endpoints are exposed 
like do you have to place an external load balancer in front of that and set up the routing rules it's a hassle right now who takes care of networking and resource management and security high availability fault tolerance service discovery there are a lot of challenges and there are a lot of manual steps that you have to take care by yourself if you were using containers without any orchestration system right so that is why we use kubernetes kubernetes is the answer to all these things it takes care of uh, all of these things with minimum or optimized intervention it also takes care of scalability load balancing orchestration and many other aspects but you have to remember this thing kubernetes is not always the solution why i say that because you know let's say you have an application a small application uh, the one that we just saw in the last video a to do list application it's it has let's say only a couple of containers you don't need an entire orchestration system to manage just two containers it's wastage of resources it's wastage of money and it will add a lot of administrative efforts it will add a lot of toil to your team to manage that container because even though if you are using a managed service such as aks or eks or gke even though you are using a kubernetes managed service then also you have to have some sort of administrative efforts to manage those clusters to maintain those clusters to make sure that uh, your workload is optimized properly and you have to plan your schedule for upgrades patching and so on so there are a lot of things that you have to take care of and it's not just like that your application is microservice based or if you have a containerized application you know you deploy it on kubernetes no that's not a solution you have to analyze each and every aspect whether you need kubernetes or not whether you can use something like docker compose or something like just the containers uh, running on a bare metal machine on a virtual machine that should uh, suffice your need or you can use a let's say a virtual private server just like a digital ocean droplet or aws light scale or any image from the gcp or azure marketplace that would also uh, you know fulfill your needs with minimum cost minimum administrative effort minimum maintenance so you have to do your uh, due diligence on this point whether you actually need containers or not okay, i hope now you have uh, the basic understanding of containers and why we need kubernetes and with that being said i conclude this video so thank you so much for watching i hope this video was somewhat helpful and valuable if you think so please uh you know uh, complete the comment and like target that we have set at the beginning of this video and subscribe the channel if you are new here even though you're not subscribing it it's fine i'm still gonna be publishing the next video and you can still watch it so don't worry about it and i will see you soon with the next video in the next video we'll be looking into the kubernetes architecture and the basic kubernetes fundamentals so thank you so much for watching i will see you soon